and welcome back. Notice the difference? In this episode, we are gonna do, we're gonna cover the sleeve from here to here. In the following episode, we're going to complete this sleeve from here to here. So let's get started. If the most complicated part of the sweater is the yoke, the second most complicated part of the sweater is the sleeve. Let's analyze the sleeve. This is the yoke, the outer perimeter of the yoke. This sleeve is simply a tube that is built starting from the outer perimeter of the yoke all the way down towards the wrist. Now this tube starts with a chain, not a foundation chain, but a chain. Here is the chain that is connected, that connects, it acts as a bridge that connects the front part to the back part of the yoke. The complication here is to figure out these two things. Number one, how long do I need to have this chain? And two, where to attach it? Depending on the size of your torso, whether it's a small, medium, large, extra large, and so forth, your chain may be longer or shorter than mine, and it will need to be attached in a different location of the outer perimeter of the yoke compared to mine. But don't worry. I'm going to give you the instructions on how to figure out exactly that. I am going to remove my sweater in the making. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I am going to put on this that we all know very well. If occasionally I look in that direction, it's because I have a mirror right in front of me over there, which helps me see that everything looks as it should. Okay, put on your yokes, just like I did. Make sure that the front part is in the front and that it's uh, at the center of your torso. What we're gonna do now is going to figure out where exactly to attach that chain. So follow my instructions. Raise your arms like this. Now, I am right-handed, so this is my dominant arm. So my dominant arm stays straight like this. This is my less dominant arm, and I bend it like this, okay? Make sure that your hand looks like an L, okay? Now, this part of your hand is gonna go under the armpit on the other side. So just like this. This is where you're gonna put a stitch marker and that indicates where the chain will, will be attached. So you can do like this, Boom. done. And this is the stitch marker right here. And voila, we are done. This is where the chain will be attached, which, and then this will basically decide where the other stitch markers will also be attached. So let's take this off and let's put it on the table. This is my yoke as I position it on the table. <clears throat> this is the stitch marker that I had just placed and now I am going to fold the yoke just like this, making sure that the middle part is in the middle right here like this. Okay, has to be done. This part has to be done, you know, rather precisely. Okay, so this is the stitch marker right here. So I'm gonna place another one right on the other side, right here, on the other side of the yoke. That's where it is, right here. And I'm gonna place one right here. Very good. So now I know that the chain will travel from the 
front part of the yoke to the back part of the yoke at these points. Now I am also going to place another stitch mark, stitch marker right here. This part is the middle of the yoke and now I'm going to count the stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. So now I'm gonna count 28 stitches on the other side as well. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 9, 4, 6, 8, 20, 22, 24, 26, and 28. Right there, 28. And I am going to now do the same on the other side, right there. Done. Let me clarify this very important thing. The distance between these two stitch markers happens to be, in my case, 28 stitches. But don't, so don't follow the number I just counted because it is very likely that your yoke will have a different number of stitches between these two stitch markers. So whatever the number is, in your case for your yoke make sure that you have that same number counted from the middle stitch marker to the other side of the yoke so that you have the same distance between these two stitch markers and the middle point of the yoke and now that we have the placement of the four stitch markers we can remove this stitch marker here the one in the middle <clears throat> Now the next thing we need to do is the following. Uh, take the front part of your yoke and lift it just like this. This is the back part of the yoke. Now have a string just like this. And we need to knot the string to this side of the yoke uh, at the position right where that stitch marker is. We're not gonna stitch anything. What we are simply gonna do is just uh, not make a just a simple knot not too tight because we're going to remove it just like that and now we are going to put this yoke back on and now that you put the yoke back on locate the string that you had attached now do exactly as I am doing right now So that will be the length of the chain. Maybe it's a little bit too tight. Let's give it a little bit of ease, just like this. Perfect. So that will be the length of our chain. So I have here a pair of scissors. I want to cut it right there. There. This little string, I'm gonna remove it now. This is how long the chain needs to be underneath each one of my armpits. In your case, it might be shorter or longer, it doesn't matter. Now, what I need you to do is to chain, make a chain exactly of this length and count how many chains this length requires. I just finished stitching the string of chains. So this was the original length, and uh, which worked out to be uh, 32 chains for me. Of course, for you, it will be a different number. So this one already served its purpose and I can throw it away. And uh, this also has served its purpose and I can throw it away. Um, all I needed to know was figure out how many chains do I needed to make. What I'm gonna do now, I'm going to uh, use my regular yarn and uh, chain 32 stitches between these two stitch markers. And then I do the same also between these two stitch markers. 
So I'm gonna show you how I do it just, you know, with one. I don't have to do it uh, for both in this tutorial. So I'm going to remove one stitch marker and uh, actually I am going to go, I'm gonna chain from the back into the front. I'm gonna insert my hook underneath both loops, not just the front loop because this is a joint. This is an area of the sweater that um, will be stressed, uh, will basically be under, you know, bigger stresses and therefore I need this particular joint to be strong and that's why I am going to stitch the first stitch under both loops uh, and not under the first loop. Okay, And now I'm going to make a chain of 32 stitches. One, two, three, four, 31 and 32 and good so now I'm going to make sure that the chain does not twist and I'm going to seal it right here I can remove this stitch marker because now it's in the way Done. Okay, and now here is my pair of scissors. And done. I connected the chain, making sure that the chain does not twist. And I connected the, the chain in between those two stitch markers and I created my armpit chain right there. And now we are ready to start stitching our sleeve. Yeah! And now the time has come to start stitching our sleeve. I'm going to do the first two rows with you and then you will be uh, good to go uh, on your own. The first thing that we need to do is to uh, figure out the rotation, like where the first row will go. Is it gonna go this way or is it gonna go this way? Well, let's take a look at the row prior. So I can see because I because I am familiar with uh, this particular stitch, I know that this, what I'm facing right now, this is what the stitch looked like when I was stitching it this in this direction. So this means that I needed to start this row by turning in the direction after I have turned the work. Uh, the first stitch will be done in the middle of the chain because I want the seam to keep growing underneath the arm. So I am gonna place, uh, where is my yarn? Here is my yarn, right here. So I am gonna place um, somewhere here in the middle. I am gonna start by making one chain to add height and to start, and to start my work. And I am gonna now place my stitch marker here. And what I'm gonna do going forward is an entire round or row of half double crochet stitch in the front loop. Now, of course, the half double crochet stitch in the front loop, the half double crochet stitch that I work in the chain will not be in the front loop because the chain does not have a front loop. So it will be, but once I hit the yoke, then it will be the typical half double crochet stitch in the front loop. So what I am, but now I'm actually gonna work half double crochet stitch into the chain.
for those like me who hate this part, I'm sure you understand the pain of working into the chain. So right now what I'm making, I am making half double crochet stitches into the chain. I have made, right now, how many have I made so far? I have made one, two, three, four, five, and six half double crochet stitches. And this is what it looks like. This is the chain. And I basically will keep going. Once I hit, now I want to show something. When I hit this region, which is the region when the chain joins with the rest of the yoke, here I will make a single crochet stitch. Right here at the joint, I would not make a half double crochet stitch, but a single crochet stitch because I need a little bit of strength, a little bit of stiff, you know, a little bit of stiffness right there. And then I will then proceed around here with half double crochet stitches in the front loop. And then when I get to the next joint right here, I will do the same. I will basically make a single crochet stitch right here at the insertion point. And then I will continue with half double crochet stitches on, on the chain until I reach the, the start of the row. And then I will make a slip stitch right here. Meet me at the end of this row when I will make the slip stitch. And here I am, I have completed the first round or row of the sleeve. I have two more half double crochet stitches to make. One and two. And now I am ready to slip stitch right here. And make one chain to add height. Replace my stitch marker in the new position. And now I turn my work. And I will now do another row of half double crochet stitches in the front loop as usual. Now, going forward, because we don't have to make increases anymore, we don't have to work with the yoke anymore, we are not dealing with the yoke anymore, we are dealing with just a tube, a cylinder. So we are just gonna do half double crochet stitches in the front loop for until basically the end of, uh, of the sleeve. So we don't have to deal anymore with the extended half double crochet stitch anymore. We are done with that. That was only for the yoke, not for the sleeve. Before I go, I just also wanna show you how here at the joint, at the joint I made a single crochet right there to add strength to the joint, same I did over here as well. I only do it the first row. For the rest of the sleeve, I will not do single crochet stitches anymore. I will continue with half double crochet stitches in the front loop, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, until the sleeve reaches the wrist. And then once it reaches the wrist, that's when we do the decreases and we make the cuff. But that will be the next episode. And for the final words, I put on my sweater again and I have a couple of more things to say. Uh, you probably wanna know how long the sleeve should be. Well, how long is your arm? <laughs> uh, this is how long your sleeve should be. Uh, when the, this region of the sleeve hits the wrist just like that, okay, you can stop the work. Make sure to keep count of how many rows you do with one sleeve, so you can also do it for the other sleeve as well. The next question is, do we need to do decreases or increases during the length of the sleeve? Uh, you might if you want to, but 
let's keep things simple and let's just stitch one big tube, one big cylinder without any increases and any decreases. Um, besides, I really like this style of sleeve. It's very, very, has a, an enormous amount of ease. And I think that for a, a male sweater, it's actually very flattering. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and uh, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe if you liked it. Uh, and uh, I shall see you uh, in the ex next episode where I will show you how to complete the sleeve. Where is the sleeve? How is this? What is this sleeve? It's, mm -hmm.